The Sailor Moon franchise is something that everyone might have heard of back in the 1990s. For those of you who don't know what it is, Sailor Moon is an anime franchise where the girl, originally Serena, but most popularly known as Sailor Moon, goes through many different adventures with her Sailor Scouts and fight against either. Evil. Even though Serena gets clumsy or, or is a crybaby a lot of the times in the show, she still faces her fears and goes through a lot of tough challenges. To my knowledge, the original English name started its release in the year 1995 with Fox being the first TV station to air the show along with WB, Warner Brothers, if I recall correctly, and UPN, United Paramount Network. I've heard rumors in various anime forums that there is one episode that didn't make the final cut or that it never had a chance to air on one of the stations. I have no other knowledge about the release of Sailor Moon, so I had to research where the series is originally animated from. So, I live in Ekuruno, Tokyo, and the animation studio is located near the headquarters of Azumi. My parents and I took an hour and a half road trip to the place, but there was a tad delay of traffic in the way. It was a cluster of cars and trucks zooming in by honking or beeping all around us. As I took a closer look at what was going on, I saw a police officer take out a piece of brigade tape and cross it in front of the exit that appeared to lay it out of the studio. The tape marked yellow and black, warning, do not cross. I just realized that we're almost there, but what was the tragic incident that happened outside the toy animation building? A car crash? Murder? No. Don't think too deep about this. Just leave it and move on. A minute later, we drove to the parking lot until I got out of the car. My mom and dad dropped me off as they made their way to the nearby mall of the building. After I did my research from before, I remembered watching a video where the managers were toured guests to different rooms inside of the building. Memorizing which room they are, I snuck inside and went one flight of stairs that led to the editing room. I swiftly opened up the door and many staff members who worked on Sailor Moon series turned their heads towards me, thinking that I was not supposed to be there in the first place. Instead of, one of them greeted me and asked if I was new here. I answered yes, as they invited me into the room. I questioned them about the rumor of an unreleased episode of Sailor Moon, and surprisingly, none of them answered or knew what it was. It came to my head that there are three possibilities. They might have knew something that I didn't. They could have seen the copy for themselves, or they just happened that they didn't know. It's either because they don't really know what happened, or they might have no clue on what I was talking about. Although they're staff of the series, I was thinking that the whole unaired episode rumor could be made up. After all, anyone could lie on the internet. I decided to skim through the archives bin and stacked up on the tapes on top of the desk. I managed to go through all of them and found one copy of a particular tape. The label was ripped off, revealing a middle bit of the logo with what looks like the letter S with its unusual Sailor Moon font I recall seeing on the other tapes. This could be it, I thought. I called for the whole crew to take a look at it, before one of them answered to me that the tape was too damaged and dusty. When I put it in the VCR and tried to prove them wrong, the screen focused and remained on the static for a good 30 seconds. It could have been damaged for good, or the tape wasn't able to record any of the data of the episode. This was when I thought it could have been the first draft. I asked the crew member if, it could borrow his seat, if I could borrow his seat, and he was okay with it. When I digitalized the tape to the computer, I noticed that the VHS had an actual recording of the footage. I know this might be too far-fetched at this point, but if the internet's rumors serve me right, the file name on the very, the very footage was la- labeled as SailorCry.WMV. I just thought that it was a montage of Sailor Moon crying like she does in every other episode, but I started to think that I was wrong. I double-clicked on the video file and prepared for trouble. The scratching from the VHS tape got worse in the case, so the scanning was destroyed throughout while cutting half of the vocals of the instrumental during the opening scene. After the introduction, it skipped right to the show. No cutesy little card like in the other episode. It just skipped to the episode. The dark screen abruptly brightened to a realistic drawn image of Sailor Moon. She didn't look like herself in the original anime at all, but more like an actual human. The background behind her looked like it was twisting and moving in different colors while Sailor Moon stood at the center of the screen, grinning in an evil manner. Her eyes were gouged out, black and bleeding as her hair was standing up and still. Her two scroggly pigtails were curled up as high as a sad brow. The only thing I felt was the most unsettling about this entire scene was the soundtrack. However, I wouldn't even call it a soundtrack at all. All I could hear was a screech being played accompanied by a rhythmic glitch and an analog of unusual beats from the tape. Another part that was rather disturbing for me was her gaping mouth. 
all black, revealing big gums and crooked teeth. Her nose was short and bent as it oscillated back and forth in sync with how bad and disordered it was getting. The scene happened for a good 20 seconds before the image quickly cut to her entire face, almost covering up the screen. Serena's hair appeared unkept and black, with strands swaying back and forth. Her smiling eyes were moving around and stopped every second to look at us. I was the only one who wanted to look away the most. Despite how all grotesque she looked, I couldn't turn my back because I felt like she was watching my every move. I will never forget her face to this day. I don't know how to describe it any further, but the way her mouth was still up to her old crumbled up nose and below her big chin unnerved me as well. None of the staff members dared to look at the screen. There was an ear-splitting scream that bursted through the speakers, almost sounding like a woman with faint static coming as the background noise. This went on for 15 seconds before she gave up the most frightening and appalling gasp we'd ever heard. Spiders crawling out of her left cheek, now exploding and gushing with black blood. Her mouth agap as she let out a horrifying and gut-wrenching shrink on the top of the noise. The scream didn't even sound like it came from a normal human at all. It was more like a broken chainsaw and an animal getting slaughtered. The scream went on for 20 seconds before it got cut off by another image of Sailor Moon lying on the floor with dizzy purple bleeding eyes running on down her nose. The background was once again moving and morphing into different position of colors. I heard an infant crying very painfully and heartbroken in the background. I could have sworn I heard a woman talking along with the baby voice, trying to cheer them up. After this play, the scene flickered to a man dressed in a dressed up in a tuxedo. I couldn't tell what was going on because of the colors in the background were still transforming together, but this time into a small, quick blobs flashing from one place to another through the scene. The man walked up to a child, who appeared to be writing something on the desk before he smashed the boy's head through it. His screams sounded up close like he was shouting into a microphone. They were somewhat cut off from how worse the tape's distortion was getting and the buzzing of the static turning into a looping, loud, and crumbling noise of analog. The camera cut to a close-up of the boy's face, brutally beaten and bleeding from the mouth. One side of his face was smashed into what looked like broken glass, and a few, t a few of his teeth were ripped out. The man put his head down to the boy, smashing his face once more through the desk. After seeing the spots of blood that blotched up the screen, I knew at this point I had to look away. However, I still had one eye on the screen, so I watched the boy pick up his head off the desk, blood gushing out of his throat like a waterfall, and he let out a strange sound bellow. I could see the man's hand smashing through the poor boy's face again before the screen went entirely black for a few seconds. The crumbling distorted of the tape was bothering me, and I heard a familiar voice of Sailor Moon's crying really hard. It sounded more human, though, but it wasn't the actress that did it in the few episodes. A few seconds passed as the cries from the girl got more and more intense until I heard choking noises. I also heard the boys bellowing again, then a deep voice that overlapped on top of the sounds. The screen that played a short bit of Sailor Moon episode, but I couldn't tell what it was. Then a deep voice overlaid the sounds, the screen then playing a short bit of Sailor Moon episode, but I couldn't tell what it was due to the horrible distortion from the tape during the short episode. A man voice said in a frightening manner, All of my close friends and family are dead. Sailor Mars has been beheaded. Sailor Mercury has been assassinated. Sailor Venus has been raped. There are many more of her friends that she had listed before being killed in the worst way possible. The scary thing about this part was montage of a realistic drawing depiction of each Sailor Scout's death. I know what must be done, quivered Sailor Moon. She sighed, grabbing a knife out of her desk and jabbed it into her arm as she screamed a loud, strange wail. It was descending and what was not meant for her. It sounded more like a man crying for help. The sound of the knife rubbing and cutting into the girl's flesh was painful. It made me recoil in fear. Dark red liquid gushing out of her arm as she started to cry. She still kept cutting through her skin until grotesque pictures of murder, death, and suicide flashed through the screen within 15 frames each. One of the staff members vomited on the floor, while another ran out of the room. The screen went black for a couple of seconds, and everything remained silent. No sound was playing this time. Not even the feedback from the speakers picked up anything. The background cut to the end credits of Sailor Moon, but the song was a vintage music box playing instead of the usual reprise. There was no animators who wrote this episode, nor storyboard directors or sound effect editors who worked on it. All that was shown on the screen was a montage of different Sailor Moon episodes with names scrolling past the screen. 
It was pretty confusing on why they used different people instead of the original crew that worked on it, that worked on the series. After the credits ended with the tune, the screen faded to black with the tape still running. I heard a deep, quivering voice with incoherent speech. It wasn't the language. After five seconds, the voice stopped. The tape finished the episode. Needless to say, I got scared out of my mind after watching this episode. It really made me think that I never wanted to watch another episode of Sailor Moon again. The staff members looked at one another, wanting to know what the hell just happened. I explained the whole thing and that the reason why they didn't answer from before was that they wanted to keep the tape a secret and hidden from everyone at all times. I'm sorry I stayed. I heard the door open and they came in. I heard the door open and there came in my parents, asking what was going on. I told them the whole story and one of them told me to get out there this instant. I wanted to know why, but my dad grabbed my hand and we all rushed out of the toy animation building and into the car. Traffic was still going on as we drove a bit. We stopped by the exit and I asked the police officer what was happening. He told me an incident at the studio and mentioned that there was a man who broke into the editing room and hijacked the cartoon series, purposely airing an inappropriate episode on one or more stations. That episode frightened kids so much it made them commit suicide in various ways, but mostly cutting themselves like the girl from the tape shown as Sailor Moon. The police officer added on that the animator had murdered 10 or more individuals in the building. Two of them jumped off at the highest window two that had been decapitated, one that had been raped, and another was a young boy that died of traumatic brain injury. The strangest thing I thought was that I imagined the young boy as a child who had skull been severely smashed on the desk, and the sailor scouts from the episode died the similar way those individuals had died. Another thing the police officer told me was that the animator forced the voice of Sailor Moon to do a dying voice. From what he was told, she said she couldn't or the animator would get mad and punched her in the forehead and gave her a bruise. She remained unconscious as her, as he left her in pain, running around in every room, murdering everyone in the worst way that could be done by any human possible. Another strange thing that still frightens me in, even to this day is that the list of people who were either part of the animation crew or that they were the victims of random people that died. If the animator was still there in the studio, silently and patiently waiting from God knows where, I would be the next one on his list.